Hey guys, it's Charles with Premium B, and in this video, we're gonna learn the basics of creating some glass effects inside of After Effects. We'll look at how to create glass accents for footage, textured glass for titles, and even how to composite glass in a 3D track shot for some abstract looks. And I've got a free project file you guys can download if you wanna break down everything even more. The project file is gonna be on the blog post, and the link for that will be in the description. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump over to After Effects. All right, guys, let's start by creating a glass accent for some footage. This is something you might see on like a sports highlight. We're gonna have it wipe across the screen here, and this is gonna give us the basics of kind of creating some glass effects in After Effects. So what I've got here is just a quick clip, kind of a sports highlight here. And we'll have that glass come across the screen. So the first thing we need is an adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna right click over here and do a new adjustment layer. And then let's go ahead and resize this. I'm just gonna click on the edge here and scale it in. So it's about a third wide is the entire composition here. And then with that adjustment layer selected, I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard for rotation. Now let's go ahead and rotate this 30 degrees. Then I'm just gonna click on the top of it here and stretch it so it just goes all the way off of the footage there. You can make it quite a bit bigger if you want to. And now let's go ahead and apply the first effect we're gonna use for this, and that's gonna be the transform effect. So with this layer selected, come here to effect, and then under distort, we're gonna select the transform effect. And this is one of the core effects when you're creating glass type elements, because it's gonna kind of create faux or fraction here by kind of scaling it up. So let's go over to the effects controls and under scale, you're just gonna increase this to 110. You can see what this does, it's scaled up the footage. You can actually, if you wanna do more or less than that, you can kind of see what this does. But it essentially kind of works almost like a mat, like we're matting out the top layer of footage to reveal maybe another clip below. That's what I like about this effect. We don't have to do a mat. We can just use one clip with an adjustment layer. Now let's make this stand out a little bit more from our base footage. We're gonna use a curves effect. So come here to effect and then color correction. And we're gonna select curves. And I'm just going to boost this up a little bit here just so the color's different. We can kind of see where the glass element is. You know, you can see I can click on that adjustment layer and move it around on the comp. You can see kind of what that does. So let's go ahead and animate this across our shot. So at the very beginning here, I'll have the current time indicator at the beginning. And I'm just gonna hold shift and move this over to the side all the way off the composition view. And I'm gonna hit P for position here, do a keyframe. Let's move down a little bit over a second here. And I'll just move this all the way across. I'm just holding shift so that will move across perfectly horizontally. And so it's all the way across. And now we can go ahead and just ram preview this. And you can see what that looks like. And that's one of the most basic ways you can create kind of a glass distortion effect. We can obviously push this quite a bit further. So one of the first things I like to do with this is I'm gonna select this adjustment layer and I'm gonna do Control D for Command D on a Mac. We're gonna actually duplicate that adjustment layer. This is gonna give us a second glass element we can play with. So I'm gonna select that one and let's go ahead and let's just click on the side here. I'm just gonna make it a little bit narrower. And then I'm gonna select that layer. And if I hit U on the keyboard, we can see those keyframes for that one. Let's just go ahead and offset this a couple of frames. So it's kind of like, over the back edge of our initial glass offset. And we can kind of see here if we go ahead and scroll through what this looks like. So you get kind of this dual effect and you can see the transform on our second adjustment layer is actually magnifying the one of the other. So you get kind of this dual effect here you can see right there. But let's apply a few other effects to our second adjustment layer we've got here. So with it selected, I'm coming to effect and under blur, let's do a fast box blur. This works really well for creating kind of some frosted glass looks. So I'm just gonna increase the blur radius here a little bit, maybe something like five, and we can leave the iterations here on three. If you wanna increase that, you can. It kind of gives you more of a frosty look. I'm gonna undo that. And if you guys wanna make this look a little bit nicer, I recommend using a free plugin called Quick Chromatic Aberration, which is from Plugin Everything. I'll have a link for you can download it on our blog post. If you guys have watched any of my previous tutorials, you know I use this free plugin quite a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and apply quick chromatic aberration. So I'm gonna come here to effect, come down here to plug in everything and quick chromatic aberration. And I'm gonna scroll down here and what we're gonna do, I'm actually gonna move this above the fast box blur effect and I'm gonna uncheck this unmult. We don't want to have that on. You can see how it kind of changed the color there. So make sure you turn that off. And let's go ahead and increase the position here just a little bit so we get kind of a nice kind of chromatic accent there. You can kind of see if I scroll through, you can kind of see what that's doing if I check this on and off. 
I think that works really well for kind of creating a glass kind of refraction type look. Now we go ahead and preview this to see what that looks like. See how quick and easy it is to create kind of a cool glass wipe effect. And this just gives us a nice foundation for kind of creating the basics of glass. All right, I've got another scene here. Let's take a look at how we can create some textured glass. It's gonna kind of move across these titles that we've got because getting textured glass to move is a little bit tricky to set up. So I wanted to walk you guys through that process. And the first thing we need to select is whatever glass texture we're going to use. So in the project file and here I've got a textures folder and I've got this glass texture that we're gonna use. I'm just gonna select that and add it to a new composition. And let's head back over to our scene with our titles in it. And I'm just gonna select that composition and add it to the scene composition. Now I'm gonna turn off the visibility of this glass texture for a second here. I wanna demonstrate some of the issues you may run into when you are trying to move glass layers with textures. So I'm just gonna right click here and do a new adjustment layer. And under the effects here, we're gonna use, for this demonstration, we're gonna use a compound blur. And this is a great blur effect if you wanna add some textures to something like glass. So if we come to the effects controls, what we're gonna see is we have a blur layer. And right now it's using kind of the, the titles of itself, which actually looks kind of cool. But if we come down here to the blur layer, we wanna select our glass texture. And now if I zoom in here, we can kind of see we're getting a little bit of like a frosted glass look, but it's only, you know, it's following that texture and I can increase the maximum blur and you can kind of see what that does. And that looks really slick. And we come over here and we can also invert the blur as well for a different look that's really frosty there. So I'm just gonna uninvert that again. And just looking at this right now, if you're not gonna have the texture actually move around on screen, this is a great way to add texture, but you can see if I actually select this adjustment layer and I start moving it around, you're gonna notice something a little bit odd. Uh, the first thing we can see, if I zoom in here, as I'm moving this around, you're gonna notice the actual texture, it's not like sticking to the adjustment layer. And that's because it's mapping based on our glass texture comp. It's not really looking at this adjustment layer's position. So if I actually move this off, you can see we're removing the texture, but again, the texture's not sticking to this like texture would stick to glass. And so if we are gonna actually keyframe this and have it move around, we're gonna need to set this up a little bit differently. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that adjustment layer we created there. And what we're actually gonna do is use this glass texture composition as our glass layer. And I'll show you how we can set this up. So I'm gonna turn the visibility of this back on so now we can see our texture. And the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and keyframe the movement that I want this texture to do. So at the very beginning of our composition, I'm just gonna hit P for position here, do a keyframe. And I'm gonna move down four seconds. And all I'm gonna do is just have this move off the screen. So I'm just gonna hold shift, move this all the way off the screen there at the bottom. So if I go ahead and scroll here, you can kind of see what that's doing. So you will kind of need to have an idea of the movement you want your texture to do because we're actually going to duplicate this. So I'm going to select this glass texture composition and hit Control D, Command D on a Mac. So now we have two copies. And on this bottom copy, we're going to select it. We want to pre-compose that. So come here to Layer, and I'm just going to select Pre-Compose. And it's very important here. You want to make sure you move all attributes into a new composition. And I'm just going to rename this. We'll call it Texture Movement. Let's go ahead and click OK and then we can turn off the visibility for that layer. And now in our original glass texture composition here, we're gonna select that, and we're gonna change this to be an adjustment layer. And the way you do this, you can see over here with our switches, if you don't see that, just hit F4 on the keyboard there, and that'll toggle those. So you can see we have quite a few different icons here. We wanna select this one here, that has kind of a half circle, looks like a black and white cookie. And so we're gonna go ahead and check that on, and that's gonna make that layer an adjustment layer. And you can do this with any layers that you bring into After Effects, if there are different shapes, and you want them to act as an adjustment layer, just go ahead and check that on for those layers. And now we can just apply effects directly to this now. So with our glass texture selected there, let's come to effect, and let's do a fast box blur. So under blur, fast box blur. And let's make this really frosty for the blur radius. I'm gonna bump that up to 13. And then for the iterations, I'm gonna leave that at three, but if you want even more, you can go ahead and increase that. So I'll just set that back to three. And now let's apply a transform effect. So under Effect, it's gonna be under Distort and Transform. And I'm just gonna increase this just a little bit. I'm gonna scale this up to be 104. And now let's also apply a Curves effect. And I'm just gonna bump this up a little bit as well. Now comes the part where we wanna add in our texture and you can use either Compound Blur, but in this case, I'm actually gonna use Displacement Map because I think it looks a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna come over to Effect and under Distort we are going to select Displacement Map. So let's scroll down here in the effect settings, make this a little bit wider so we can see it. So for the Displacement Map layer, I'm gonna check this down and we wanna select our Texture Movement Composition. Once we have that selected, 
You can come over here and adjust the horizontal and vertical displacement. So I'm gonna bump this up close to 23 or 25. And if we zoom in here, now we can see that texture kind of on the glass. And if I scroll through here, we're gonna see now that texture is sticking to the glass plane as it kind of moves across the screen. Now something else that would look really nice on this is if we had kind of a beveled edge on this glass piece and we can do that. I wanna show you guys how we can create that. So what we're gonna do is come over to our glass texture composition here and just double click on it. We're gonna jump into that. So now we can actually make changes to our glass texture here and it's gonna be reflected back in our main scene. And as you can see, this is just made up of black and white here, kind of luma values for that displacement. So one way we can create a beveled edge is creating a white edge around all of this. And so I'm just gonna select that glass texture we're gonna come up here to the rectangle tool. If you don't see that, just click and hold and you can see all the different ones. I'm gonna select rectangle tool and just double click on it. And that's gonna automatically create a mask around everything here on our texture. And with that select, let's come here to effect. We're gonna come down to generate. We're gonna select stroke. And this will add a stroke to the mask there. Go ahead and turn the mask visibility off. We can see this a little bit easier. And I'm just gonna increase this brush size here for the stroke to 12. That will give us this nice kind of even edge around everything here. Let's jump back over to our main scene. And now we can see this creates kind of that displaced beveled edge there. I think this looks really nice. And we can go ahead and scroll through this and kind of see what this looks like on the shot. How that displaces that. Let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this. As a quick side note, if you guys wanna know how to make titles like this, we do have a tutorial on that as well for creating matte animations in After Effects. I'll have a link for that tutorial on the blog post if you wanna check that out as well. Now I'm just gonna sub in compound blur instead of this placement map here, just so you can see what that's like as well. So I'll come over to effect and under blur, we're gonna select the compound blur. And then in this situation, what we wanna do for the blur layers, we wanna select again our texture movement composition. And I'll just zoom in here and we can increase this. And now we can see kind of that texture. And again, as we move through here, we will see that it is sticking to the glass. It's a little bit different here on the edge the way the compound blur works from displacement. That's why I like displacement map better. I think the edge looks a lot better. However, I do wanna show you guys a few different issues that can arise when you're using these effects kind of on the glass texture there. So I wanna show you a few troubleshooting things you can do to fix that real quick. So I'm just gonna drag in a different image here because right now we can't see any issues happening at the edge of our composition because this is a black composition here around the edges. So I'm just gonna bring in another image here temporarily. So I'm just gonna place this above my original animation composition here. So this is a vaporwave image. So I wanna show you a couple different things and one issue that might arise with compound blur. So if I select my glass texture, if I scroll through here, you may notice something. If you actually look at that beveled edge, when I use the compound blur, this is kind of an issue you can run into. You can see that beveled edge isn't really there. And as I scroll down, there it is. And then if we keep going, it actually kind of goes past the edge. And I wasn't quite sure why this was happening. But a lot of different effects in After Effects tend to not play nice with the compound blur effect because of just the way it works. And in this situation, the solution for this is the transform effect is kind of affecting the compound blur even though it shouldn't. So if we scroll up here and I just turn off the transform effect in this situation, you will now see that that edge sticks to the layer correctly and we're not getting that issue. But now you might be noticing another issue that has arisen, which we couldn't see before because we had the transform effect on we can see you're getting a little bit of black fringing around the edges, and this can happen with the displacement or the compound blur effect. And I wanna show you guys how you can fix this as well. So I'm actually gonna turn off the compound blur and turn back on displacement map, just so you can see it's happening with both effects here. So you can see with displacement map, it's happening around the edge. And it's actually creating a hole in our footage. So if I actually turn on where we can preview the alpha channel, you can see it's actually going right through the footage. And this is a pretty easy fix. All you need to do is select your bottom layer footage, in this case, the Vaporwave image. And we're gonna use CC Repetile to fix this. So I'm just gonna cover the effects and presets, type in CC Repetile, and it's under Stylize. So I'm just gonna select that and drop it onto my image there. And what we need to do here is under the tiling, I'm gonna set this to be Unfold. And I'm just gonna expand each of these about 100 pixels, that usually works. So I'll just type in 100 for each of these values. Now I use CC Reptile a lot to fix issues like this, but you may notice it actually hasn't fixed the issue yet. And that's again, we have another effect that's kind of conflicting with this. So let's go back over to our glass texture. And what we need to look at is the fast box blur. We need to uncheck this repeat edge pixels and that will allow CC Reptile to work through and correct this issue for us. So just keep that in mind if you're trying to remove any artifacting happening around the edges. 
All right, let's quickly take a look at the final scene I've got here. And that's how we're gonna actually track in some glass into a scene using camera tracking. And this can be cool if you want to create some kind of abstract looks, or maybe if you want to create a like shield-like effect for something that's sci-fi. So as you can see here, I have a drone shot and I've already tracked this using the camera tracker here in After Effects, but you can kind of see everything kind of like tracking with everything on the trees. And if you want to know how to track footage there, you can just come here to Window and you're going to select the Tracker window here. And then all I did was did the Track Camera feature there to track this footage. And once that completes, you're going to get this effect applied to your footage and you'll see kind of all these tracking markers on your footage. So I'm just gonna come out here and I wanna highlight this kind of on one of the trees in a flat spot here. I'm just gonna right click. Let's create a solid in the camera. And this solid just kind of gives us a point of reference here when we add in our layer. So we can kind of get a better feel for this in 3D space. So what we're actually gonna add into this shot, I'm gonna use our glass texture pre-comp that we created for the last scene. So I'm just gonna drag this into this composition. And let's go ahead and make it a 3D layer here with the switches there. If you don't see that again, just hit F4 to toggle those. And that's gonna be under the cube there. We're gonna make it 3D. Now you can see, as I scroll through here, we can see it's kind of floating in 3D space. You can reposition this using the gizmos here in After Effects. I'm just gonna kind of rotate this until this looks the way, kind of facing toward the camera. I'll speed this part up. All right, so now you can see what I've set up here after rotating that in position. We're gonna fly through this glass plane. So this glass will be kind of frosty. We can't really see through it, and then we'll just fly straight through it. And now we can go ahead and delete that solid that we created because we don't need to reference that anymore. And I do want to quickly mention as well that you can use any layer that you want to here, any other textures you want. And again, you could always mask this into a specific shape if you wanted to, like a circle, if it's like a shield effect. And a good thing you could do with that is just jump into your glass texture here and maybe mask it in here. And then that way it's going to reflect that shape here back in our main scene. And then also on our main footage we've got down here, you may have already seen this, but underneath the 3D camera tracker, I've already applied CC Reptile, so I'm just gonna turn that on because we will get some edging issues when this kind of glass piece gets really close to the camera like this, those would arise. So I've just went ahead and already applied that, so we can already avoid that already. So now let's go ahead and select our glass texture, and I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate that. So what we need to do in this case for that texture to map to this glass plane again, we need to go ahead and pre-compose one of these so we can use that as a reference for our displacement map. So I'm gonna select this bottom copy that we created and come here to layer and we're gonna select pre-compose. And I'm just gonna call this 3D texture movement. And again, we wanna make sure we move all attributes into a new composition, go ahead and click okay. And now when we do that, I wanna show you guys something. If I go ahead and solo that layer and I scroll through here, we're gonna notice we do not see that layer anymore in our composition. And that's because that is a 3D layer and inside of that comp, there's no 3D camera. So the solution for this is we need to collapse transformations for this layer. So with it selected, come over here on the switches. You're gonna see the one looks like a little sun-shaped icon there. Go ahead and check that on for that layer. And now we can go ahead and see that layer floating in 3D space and it's you know being reflected correctly here for our camera. So now we go ahead and unsolo that. And for the visibility, we can go ahead and turn that off because we don't need to reference that anymore. But what that's done is that set up that texture again for us so it will map correctly in the same place here on our layer that we're gonna use as an adjustment layer. So let's go ahead and select our glass texture now, and we wanna make it an adjustment layer. So again, just come over here to the circle sphere that's split in half, black and white cookies, what I call it, and go ahead and make it an adjustment layer. And now all we need to do is apply the effects to this to kind of create our glass look. So with that layer selected, let's come to effect. Let's do a fast box blur. Let's go ahead and increase this here a little bit. I want this to be a little more frosty because it's kind of cold here. Maybe increase iterations here to five. Now let's do a curves effect. Bump this up a little bit. And let's also do a quick chromatic aberration. So under plug in everything. And make sure you uncheck unmolt there. Otherwise it'll mess up the colors a little bit. You can see that. And let's go ahead and increase this. I really like the kind of rainbow fringe it gives the trees here. And finally let's do a displacement map. So it'll be under distort and displacement map. And for this one, our displacement layer, we wanna select that 3D texture movement. So that will map that texture again to our glass. And let's go ahead and increase this horizontally a little bit, maybe a little bit vertically as well. Now if we zoom in here, we can kind of see that texture. And let's go ahead and scroll through this, see how this looks. And the texture looks like it's sticking to the glass. That's what we want. And now you can see here, we're getting our fringe around the edge. 
And that's because even though I applied CC Reptile, come back up here to our Fastbox Blur, it's got that repeat edge pixels on by default. Go ahead and check that off. Now let's go ahead and do a quick RAM preview. All right, everything there looks like it's working correctly. And you could obviously add in another effect there, a flare or something, really make that transition look pretty cool. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you can't just move this glass layer around because again, it's referencing that texture. If you don't have a texture on it, you can move it around very easily. But if you do move this kind of initial layer here, you'll need to jump into your 3D texture movement or just copy the position data there and jump in here and then hit P on the keyboard and paste that here in the position. That way it just kind of duplicates that so it will reference the texture there, make sure it's sticking to the glass correctly. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial, but hold up, I do have a quick favor to ask of you guys. I know only like three people are still watching the tutorial at this point, but you might've noticed the Premium Beat YouTube channel is almost at 200,000 subscribers. So the way I see it is if you three people subscribe, we only have to make like 333 and a third more videos to hit 200,000 subscribers, which would be pretty awesome. And as a show of thanks, I'll let you guys in on a little secret. We've got another tutorial coming out very soon. It's gonna show you how to create some glass and ice text effects in After Effects. I might even flash a little bit of that on the screen really quickly. So if you guys enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna enjoy that one as well. And that's all I've got. And I will see you three on the next one.